And the revolution is called angiogenesis. And it's based on the process that our bodies use to grow blood vessels. So why should we care about blood vessels? Well, the human body is literally packed with them. 60,000 miles worth in a typical adult. End to end, that would form a line that would circle the earth twice. The smallest blood vessels are called capillaries. We've got 19 billion of them in our bodies. And these are the vessels of life. And as I'll show you, they can also be the vessels of death. So the body has the ability to regulate the amount of blood vessels that are present at any given time. And it does this through an elaborate and elegant system of checks and balances, stimulators and inhibitors of angiogenesis, such that when we need a brief burst of blood vessels, the body can do this by releasing stimulators, proteins called angiogenic factors, that act as natural fertilizer and stimulate new blood vessels to sprout. And when those excess vessels are no longer needed, the body prunes them back to baseline using naturally occurring inhibitors of angiogenesis. Now there are other situations where we start beneath the baseline and we need to grow more blood vessels just to get back to normal levels, for example after an injury. And the body can do that too, but only to that normal level, that set point. But what we now know is that for a number of diseases, there are defects in the system where the body can't prune back extra blood vessels or can't grow enough new ones in the right place at the right time. And in these situations, angiogenesis is out of balance. And when angiogenesis is out of balance, a myriad of diseases result. For example, insufficient angiogenesis, not enough blood vessels, leads to wounds that don't heal, heart attacks, legs without circulation, death from stroke, nerve damage. And on the other hand, excessive angiogenesis, too many blood vessels, drives disease. And we see this in cancer, blindness, arthritis, obesity, Alzheimer's disease. In total, there are more than 70 major diseases affecting more than a billion people worldwide that all look on the surface to be different from one another, but all actually share abnormal angiogenesis as their... Now, I'm going to focus on cancer because angiogenesis is a hallmark of cancer, every type of cancer. So here we go. This is a tumor, dark, gray, ominous mass growing inside a brain. And under the microscope, you can see hundreds of these brown staining blood vessels, capillaries that are feeding cancer cells, bringing oxygen and nutrients. But cancers don't start out like this. And in fact, cancers don't start out with a blood supply. They start out as small, microscopic nests of cells that can only grow to one half a cubic millimeter in size. That's the tip of a ballpoint pen. Then they can't get any larger because they don't have a blood supply, so they don't have enough oxygen or nutrients. And in fact, we're probably forming these microscopic cancers all the time in our body. Autopsy studies uh, from people who died in car accidents have shown that about 40% of women between the ages of 40 and 50 actually have microscopic cancers in their breasts. About 50% of men in their 50s and 60s have microscopic prostate cancers. And all, virtually 100% of us, by the time we reach our 70s, will have microscopic cancers growing in our thyroid. Yet without a blood supply, most of these cancers will never become dangerous. Dr. Judah Folkman, who was my mentor and who was the pioneer of the angiogenesis field, once called this cancer without disease. So the body's ability to balance angiogenesis when it's working properly prevents blood vessels from feeding cancers. And this turns out to be one of our most important defense mechanisms. A cancer goes from being harmless to deadly. Cancer cells mutate, and they gain the ability to release lots of those angiogenic factors, natural fertilizer, that tip the balance in favor of blood vessels invading the cancer. And once those vessels invade the cancer, it can expand, it can invade local tissues, and the same vessels that are feeding tumors allow cancer cells to exit into the circulation as metastases. And unfortunately, this late stage of cancer is the one at which it's most likely to be diagnosed. When angiogenesis is already turned on, and cancer cells are growing like wild. So if angiogenesis is a tipping point between a harmless cancer and a harmful one, then one major part of the angiogenesis revolution is a new approach to treating cancer by cutting off the blood supply. We call this anti-angiogenic therapy, and it's completely different from chemotherapy. So to look for a way to prevent angiogenesis in cancer, I went back to look at cancer's causes. 
And what really intrigued me was when I saw that diet accounts for 30 to 35 percent of environmentally caused cancers. Now the obvious thing is to think about what we could remove from our diet, what to strip out, take away. But I actually took a completely opposite approach and began asking what could we be adding to our diet that's naturally antiangiogenic, that could boost the body's defense system and beat back those blood vessels that are feeding cancers. In other words, can we eat to starve cancer? Well, the answer is yes, and I'm going to show you how. And our search for this has taken us to the market, the farm, and to the spice cabinet, because what we've discovered is that Mother Nature has laced a large number of foods and beverages and herbs with naturally occurring inhibitors of angiogenesis. So here's a test system we developed. Uh, at the center is a ring from which hundreds of blood vessels are growing out in a starburst fashion. And we can use this system to test dietary factors at concentrations that are attainable by eating. So let me show you what happens when we put in an extract from red grapes, the active ingredient resveratrol. It's also found in red wine. This inhibits abnormal angiogenesis by 60%. Here's what happens when we add an extract from strawberries. It potently inhibits angiogenesis. An extract from soybeans. And here is a growing list of our anti-angiogenic foods and beverages that we're interested in studying. And for each food type, we believe that there's different potencies within different strains and varietals. And we want to measure this because, well, while you're eating a strawberry or drinking tea, why not select the one that's most potent for preventing cancer? And in fact, when we give cancer patients anti-angiogenic therapy, here, an experimental drug for a glioma, which is a type of a brain tumor, you can see that there are dramatic changes that occur when the tumor is being starved. Here's a woman with a breast cancer being treated with the anti-angiogenic drug called Avastin, which is FDA approved. And you can see that the halo of blood flow disappears after treatment. Now I've just shown you two very different types of cancer that both responded to anti-angiogenic therapy. So a few years ago, I asked myself, can we take this one step further and treat other cancers, even in other species. Here's a cancer growing in the lip of a quarter horse named Guinness. It's a very, very deadly type of cancer called an angiosarcoma, had already spread to his lymph nodes. So we used the anti-angiogenic skin cream for the lip and the oral cocktail so we could treat from the inside as well as the outside. And over the course of six months, he experienced a complete remission. And here he is six years later, Guinness with his very happy owner. And for many people around the world, dietary cancer prevention may be the only practical solution because not everybody can afford expensive end-stage cancer treatments, but everybody could benefit from a healthy diet based on local, sustainable, anti-angiogenic crops. Albert St. Georgie once said that discovery consists of seeing what everybody has seen and thinking what nobody has thought. I hope I've convinced you that for diseases like cancer, obesity, and other conditions, that there may be a great power in attacking their common denominator, angiogenesis. And that's what I think the world needs now. Thank you.